I'm going to explore some relatively advanced analysis, but it follows on from an existing video, uh, a recent video that enabled us to group our customers by their ranking. It got me thinking, well, what else could we actually generate from this information? And, and I realized, well, it actually would have been quite interesting if we looked at it from a percentage perspective instead of a total perspective. Because for instance, if for, uh, one year, one year you made 20% of your sales were from your top five customers, and then the next year it was say 5%, you want to know that, you want to see that, and you want to understand why that is actually occurring. Let's first go through how we actually group these customers in the first place. We'll do a quick recap. I'll also, in the link below, put the video that explains how we actually got to this, just to this point. And this is this formula here. But essentially what we're doing is that we try to, we try to dynamically rank within each year how many sales were made per customer. So we had a rank of one to 50 in this case, because we have 50 customers. And we dynamically said, well, uh, if they were, uh, if that customer was in the top five, then put them in the top five group. If they were ranked five to 20, put them in that group, and then the rest in another group. But now what we want to do is we want to see, well, what is the percent of this amount of total sales? And we want to see all of this as percentage. So we can actually see if that percentage change is occurring through time. Now, it's actually not too difficult from where we are now. If you understand this, this is gonna be a piece of cake. This is obviously the first battle, understanding what's going on here. But to actually get the result as a percentage, all we have to do is, well, we need to work out how to get this number, basically, into all of these numbers so that we can go 4.988 divided by 35 million and so on and so forth. Now, a way to just, obviously we need to get that number. So how we can just, um, you know, I guess, try and get there by process of elimination is we can, first of all, just copy this table and then try work out a measure that will retrieve 35 million in this context. But funnily enough, it's actually, it's, it's actually not difficult at all. You see here that we've used total sales inside of Calculate and we've changed the context by this quite advanced formula. Well, that total sales by itself has no relationship, has, it is unrelated to this customer groups table that we created. This total sales is summing up revenue inside of this sales table. And there's no connection, right? So there's actually no relation between this and this. And so if we try and filter this by this customer groups table, nothing is gonna happen. But check out what happens if we actually bring this into the table. There is a filter being placed on 2014 though, right? So we are getting this result, the total in every single iteration of this table. 2014 is filtering that number, but this groups uh, dimension is not filtering because there's no connection in the data model. So we basically have uh, the two key elements to this question or to this um, piece of analysis. So what we can do is we can create a new measure and all I'm gonna do, I could just use that customer, well, I could actually just use that customer group so we, we can just do that. So I'm just gonna go percentage, uh, I'm gonna call it this percentage uh, customer sales per group and I just go divide and then I'm gonna go customer sales by group and then I'm gonna divide it by total sales here and then I'm gonna put zero as my alternative result. And then if I copy and paste this just down below and then I go and obviously we wanna format that so I'm gonna turn it into a percentage. And then if I now go and grab that and put this in the table, you'll see that we now have the percentage. And, as you, and it, it doesn't change that much in this case but it is looks like it is definitely calculating the right result because we're getting 100% uh, for, for all of the totals. And we can see that it's broken down uh, 14, and here it's 14.2, the next year it's 13, 13.2. So that is a seriously cool technique, right? And it's built on top of an existing technique 
uh, or, or or pattern, if you like, that we have um, that we've used previously, and it wasn't wasn't too far removed from 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 where we were, um, and we were able to find some some pretty cool insight, right? And you could also actually put this on a visualization. So, for instance, we might want to make a really simple visualization, especially if you've got more years as well. Just think about how um, you know how 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 more detailed this could be. This is only three years of information. We could actually turn this into a line chart. Uh, we can move the groups down to here, for example. Or you could turn it into an area chart. There's a whole range of different things that you could uh, that you could do, a number of different ways that you could slice and dice this information by. But there you have it. So we're, we're now uh, dynamically calculating, dynamically calculating where our sales are coming from, which which ranking group sales are coming from through time. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.